G'day all, welcome to another tutorial. So today we're going to tackle arrays. And arrays are just another type of variable. Well, they're another way to use multiple variables, basically. Uh, it's just a list of the same variable over and over again. And each variable is stored uh, one after the other in RAM. So an array is like a table in a spreadsheet. You might have a page in a spreadsheet and you'll see, you know, in uh, Microsoft Excel or, or uh, OpenOffice Calc, you'll see all the little boxes and each box has an index like A9 would be the um, ninth column of the A row or F7 would be the seventh column of the F row. And in exactly the same way, an array has, uh, each item in an array has an index as well. So a spreadsheet would actually be a two-dimensional array, which we're not going to be going into, but yeah, it's the same sort of idea. Uh, you can make an array out of any data type you like. You can make a car array, a char array, or an integer array. You can make a bool array, a float, a double array, anything you want. Even later on, when we get to making our own data types, you'll see that you can quite easily define arrays of the, the data types that you've invented yourself. Uh, arrays are a convenience more than anything. Yeah, it's possible to program without arrays, but I would hate to think what the code would look like. It would be a mess. Okay, so consider the following objective. Yeah, this is what we want to do. We want to uh, we want to declare five variables, all of them called A, because maybe they're holding the same sorts of things. Maybe they're holding people's ages in a database, or maybe they maybe they are. <laughs> I forgot the rest of that sentence, but you know, they could be holding anything, really. Uh, so A0 we've set to 2, A1 to 5, A2 to uh, 7, A3 to 4, and A4 to 1. And this is what that's going to look like in RAM. So we've just got dot 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 here, either side of these boxes, to indicate that RAM actually goes left and right forever. Well, not forever, you know, for 4 gig or 8 gig, however many uh, gig you've got worth of RAM. And here's my variables. So A0 is holding a 2, A1's got a 5, we've got a 7, we've got a 4, and we've got a 1. And yeah, they're, they're basically just normal variables. So if we wanted to, uh, for instance, set them all to 0, like I've got just here, um, we've actually got to do it with 5 lines, one after the other. I mean, there is an easier way to do it, but without using sort of pointers and, and underhand tricks, you know, you have to set them one at a time. So we have A0 equals 0, A1 equals 0, A2 equals 0, A3 equals 0, A4 equals 0. That's five lines of code, and it's really boring to type. Uh, this is what that would look like in RAM. Fair enough. But in typing those five lines of code, you run the risk of, of you know, maybe saying A0 equals 0, A0 equals 0, and then forgetting to put A1 equals 0. You know, you run the risk of having a typo, so it's no good. Instead, what we can do is we can use an array. And there's a few ways to create an array. We'll look at other ways later on when we're looking about uh, the heap and pointers and that sort of thing. But uh, this is one of the simplest ways. So we basically say a data type, then the name of the array, and then we open up square brackets. And inside the square brackets, we simply say how many items we want. And then we close the square bracket and put a semicolon. So right here, I've got an example of uh, almost exactly the uh, previous slide, those five variables, five integers. Uh, but these ones are declared as an array. So we go int arr, that's the name of my array, arr. And inside my square brackets, I've written five. So that means I want five integers all in a row in RAM. And I'm going to call them arr. Uh, then, then we can do something like this. So int arr5, that's the uh, declaration from the previous slide. Uh, we can refer to the individual elements by putting the element numbers inside square brackets. So arr and then in square brackets 0 is a perfectly normal integer variable. And we've set that to 2 just here. And that's actually the first uh, box in RAM of the arr array. Likewise, we can set the uh, arr element number 1 to 5, we can set number 2 to 7, number 3 to 4, number 4 to 1. Easy as that pretty much. So you just put the uh, element number that you want to set in the square brackets and then you've pretty much got a perfectly normal integer variable. And this is what it looks like in RAM. Almost identical to the previous example when we, when we uh, declared them at 
at the start as integers. That's meant to be a lowercase a just there. Yeah, I hope I've got my cool cursor up. I tried to make it a, a magnifying glass. I hope it shows up. It's really good. Anyway, that aside, um, ARR0 has a 2 in it. ARR1 has a 5 in it. Uh, we got ARR2 has a 7, ARR3 has a 4, and ARR4 has a 1. But you can basically see that we've got exactly the same thing, pretty much, as the previous example, only this time we've got um, the ability to use these uh, element numbers in the square brackets. So we've just got five variables, they just happen to be called something slightly different. And the advantage to using an array is that inside those square brackets we can actually put expressions. So right here I've got ARRI plus 5 equals 3. So whatever i is, i could be a variable, maybe it's 0, maybe it's 2. It could be 12 even, you know, it could be counting up uh, inside a for loop. Yeah, but you can just set, um, you know, the elements of an array, and uh, for the index you can use other variables. If you like, also, this is even more confusing, but you can actually use uh, other elements of the ARR array uh, in the index to another element of the ARR array. So my ARR array just here is a perfectly normal uh, array, but the index that I'm accessing inside here is the variable j plus um, whatever the uh, ARR array happens to have at index q. You know, we don't know what the variable q has, so who knows what that's going to do, but yeah, I think the point is pretty clear. You can basically put in whatever expression you want into those square brackets. Which means, quite happily, that we can use for loops and other loops to access the elements of our array. So, uh, if you wanted to print out the uh, five values of the separate integer variables as we declared them at the very start, you'd just have to put five different C outs. You'd have to say C out array element uh, A0, you know, equals whatever. And it's really slow, but if you want to use a loop, uh, then you can, you can just use an array. And here I've got for int i equals 0, while i is less than 5, i++. Plus plus. And I've used that for loop to print out array element, you know, i is, and then whatever the element is set to. Well, you can set the values as well, yeah. So right here, in these two lines of code just here, uh, with this for loop and this a double r, you know, index i equals 0, uh, I've set all five elements of the array to 0. And if you remember, the original example, that actually took five lines of code to do exactly that, set the five to zero. Yeah, so this is much quicker. Furthermore, uh, yeah, <laughs> things quickly get out of hand if you're just declaring, you know, separate variables instead of using arrays. Uh, say you want to declare 1,024 integers, you know, called A0 all the way up to a1023, uh, it's going to be extremely difficult to program using that kind of, yeah, that kind of methodology, but it's really, really easy. With an array, you just say, look, C++, give us an array called ARR and make it 1024 integers. And it's just going to do it. It's just going to give you the RAM. Uh, if you want to get really, you know, really crazy, you could make a, an integer array of 5 million. And this would be, you know, completely impossible to program using separate, um, integers, but with an array it's perfectly fine. Yeah, that's going to be about 20 megabytes of RAM, so maybe you want to, I don't know, make sure you need an array that size first before you start declaring them. Yeah. Okay, so for loops and arrays go hand in hand. Yes, they do. Uh, when you first come to programming in uh, C++, uh, the way that it starts at zero all the time and counts up to one less than kind of what you told it to seems really irritating, but C++ basically does that for everything, so array indexes are the same as the way that a for loop counts. Let's let's have a look. So int a double r and then a hundred. So I've just asked um, you know C++ to give me a an array of integers and it's got a hundred in it. Uh, but what's important to note is that the very first element of a double r is uh, a double r zero. It's not a double r one. It's a double r zero, and the very last element of a double r is a double r ninety nine. So it's always one less than what you put in this bracket here. Uh, that is actually one hundred elements from zero to ninety nine. 
and it also happens to be exactly the way that this for loop counts. So this is a really, really common for loop. Um, yeah, I've used P for some reason. I don't know why I didn't use I again, but I use P just for a bit of something different. Uh, anyway, for int P equals 0, while P is less than 100, P++, plus plus, uh, that loop is going to count with P exactly the same way uh, as the elements of the ARR array are numbered. Oh, this is getting confusing. Yeah, so what I've done here is set each of the elements of ARR to uh, their element index. So ARR0 is going to be 0, ARR1 is going to be 1, ARR2 is going to be 2, etc, 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 all the way up to ARR99, which is going to be 99. And the only thing to remember uh, when you're using for loops to iterate through an array like this is that you start with 0 for a start. They always start counting with 0, these computers. And it's the less than operator. Yeah, don't use less than or equal to. Use less than. So for p equals 0, while p is less than 100, uh, counts exactly the same as the indexes of an array with 100 elements. I hope that makes sense. Okay, yeah, be really careful not to read or... <laughs> Sorry, I'm giggling. Be really careful not to read or write out of the end of an array. Yeah, this happens at the start, I think. When you get used to C++ counting from zero, it's sort of... It becomes natural, but this this might happen to you a few times at the start, and my goodness, it is confusing. Oh, I can remember this happening to me. Uh, int a double r one hundred, but then my for loop counts like a human counts. It starts from one and it counts all the way up to one hundred. And then I've tried to do exactly what I did on the previous slide. I've tried to set each of the elements of a double r to p. But uh, you know the for loop is counting wrong, so for a start. This loop skips a double r zero, and the other thing that it does is it tries to set a double r one hundred, and we know that a double r doesn't have an index number one hundred. There's no such thing as a double r one hundred. It just doesn't exist. Uh, a double r only goes up to ninety nine. So what's going to happen? Uh, well, we've seen RAM. RAM is just a bunch of boxes with numbers on them, numbers in them, and the loop above is just going to write something in the box that's after a double r. Uh, this is most probably some other variable that you've de declared in your uh, program. And it's actually going to write, what, 100 to some random variable that you've declared in your program. And your program's going to start doing really, really strange things. Yeah, so if this loop just starts kind of editing, you know, random variables that you're not expecting, um, your program basically starts to have a life of its own. And it's really quite confusing for a very long time, but... Hopefully it won't happen to you. Just be very, very careful. Don't write outside the bounds of an array. Uh, a lot of high-level languages, yeah, C Sharp and I think Java, they all kind of, they'll pick you up on it and they'll say, nah, you're not allowed to do that. I'm not going to let you write outside that array. But C++ is a cruel mistress. Yeah, it's not going to say anything. It's just going to let you write wherever you want in RAM and then uh, let you deal with the consequences. Oh yes, if you write too far outside of your array, you'll probably start writing on the pages of some other program in memory. And then Windows will, will pick you up and uh, it'll crash your program. Oh yeah, strings are arrays of char. Yeah, the basic strings that we were using are anyway. So this is the um, double quoted strings I'm talking about here. Uh, they're actually an array. Yeah, they're an array of char or char. So we could say something like char my string and then open, close, square brackets. We didn't actually look at this uh, declaration type. Maybe we'll get into this a bit later. But um, yeah, it's just an array of char. And there's an invisible zero at the end. Yeah, this is really important, actually. This is called the null symbol. Zero. Zero means null. Uh, when C out prints a string to the screen, it starts printing from the very first, so that'll be the S just there. And then it prints the T, then it prints the R, you know, and it runs along the array until it finds zero. And when it finds zero, it knows that it's it's finished printing, you know. It's got to know somehow that it's finished, otherwise it will just keep printing all the stuff in RAM. Um, yeah, so this is the RAM. This is what this array would look like. My string in RAM would look something like this. S-T-R-I-N-G space A-R-R-A-Y exclamation mark is zero. 
Yeah, so it's a perfectly normal array. We can see the invisible zero at the end. What have we got here? Ah, oh, yeah, this is really interesting, actually. Yeah, in the in the square braces to uh, access elements of an array, you can actually put a negative number there. And that means to read um, not from the start of the array, you know, the box at the start of the array, but read left of the array. So this one just here is um, read the first integer that's before the param ptr array. And this one is read the second integer that's before the param ptr array. And I don't know how good this example is. It's probably a bit kind of premature to me, of me to put something like this in to the tutorial, but I just wanted to point out that yeah, you can use negative uh, values in your indices for an array. Anyway, don't worry too much about that at the moment. That's just a bit of fun. And uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, so thank you for listening. That's arrays, folks. Go out. Enjoy them. They're great fun. See ya.